Um, the thing that I'm enjoying most, apart from the ideas so far, is that the mirror ball is still turning. Um, will imagination save your life? Imagination will save your life. There, that was quick. Um, for humans, uh, which I assume we all are, the ability to conjure up whatever you want in your mind's eye is what separates us from everything else. That and the famous opposable thumbs. Corvids, which are crows and ravens, also have the ability to imagine. They make tools and systems. They teach each other how to solve problems and get food. They can break a twig into a certain shape to hoik a snail out of a shell or bend a wire to fish for grubs. So, that's imagination. It's seeing yourself a couple of steps forward to a place that's kind of disconnected from the reality of today. That's what it's for. And so my question to you today is, someone's got to catch these, ready? How are you going to use your imagination, good catch, to see your way forwards, and what tools are you going to use to get there? Well done, last one. Now, everyone's got to think about this because it is the big question. But the three of you who are holding the paper aeroplanes, find a pen. I've seen some of you are making notes. Find a pen, open it up, and on the spine of the plane, write something you want to do. It might be go to Bulgaria and build homes. It might be um, make a film or any, any type of film. It might be play in a band, learn Arabic, open a cafe, anything. And I'm going to ask you to throw it back in about two minutes' time. While you're writing, I'll introduce myself. I'm Tim Wilson, I'm 27, I'm from Norfolk. I don't work for Ideas Tap, um, which is why I think I'm allowed to talk about them. I've worked with them for a couple of years. And if someone in a silly old lecture had thrown a paper aeroplane at me five years ago and said, what do you want to do? I probably would have written on it, I want to run an arts festival. After the Second World War, um, the towns of Europe tried to lift themselves out of ruin by starting arts festivals, Edinburgh and Avignon being the main ones. But that's the point of an arts festival. It encourages everyone to work together to imagine a better future. So my company, the Heritage Arts Company, for four years we've worked at festivals of all kinds, making pieces of theatre, building cinemas, installing galleries, making live music happen, building stages. And this February, at last, we did it. We held our own arts festival. And this is it. This is Kindle Theatre presenting a show called Furies in this enormous tunnel. It's called Vault. We worked for three weeks, we presented a hundred different shows, and 7,000 people came along. We designed a place where people wanted to have fun, where your imagination wanted to have fun. And so because we're in the build bit of TED, the important question is, while we're thinking about what to use your imagination for, is where does your imagination live? And what kind of place does it have fun in? Well, mine lives here, in this arch. It's about 50 meters long, this brick, arch, damp, leaky tunnel. For me, that's probably the most exciting place in the world at the minute. It's underneath one of London's railway stations. We worked underneath three or four of them. The reason is I met a man a couple of years ago who turned that imagination into a job. His name was Peter Dehaan. And in the last 10 years, he's given away 18 million quid of his own money to help people do just that. A couple of years ago, Ideas Tap helped us to produce a different festival called Coming Up. They're an arts charity. They have 75,000 people on their books, on the website. You can look at them all. And if you're interested in the produce of imagination, be it music, arts, architecture, writing, theatre, dance, drama, anything, have a look at them. The Coming Up Festival. To answer what it is, I'm going to ask you for the planes back. So now you've got to throw them back at me. And if they don't make it this far, then I'm stuck. Let's have them. One. Two. Oh, I'm going to need the help with that one. And a third. There was a third. That's a good throw, but it's gone forever. Um, so I'm not going to open this up now, but imagine that inside here, inside these three planes, or two, there's one down here. If you could have a look down there, because I'll have a look at the end. It's just behind the thing. Maybe not possible. Um, but imagine that there's six ideas written here. The point of the Coming Up Festival was that Ideas Tap made the whole thing just happen. And rather than tell you more about it, I'm going to show you a video. Six young artists pitched uh, to Ideas Tap and the old Vic New Voices. So we're part of a sort of mini season within a season. Right? The season itself is really exciting. There's a varied mix from uh, performance art wrestling to a silent opera and, uh, and as you see all the festival stuff around us. It's multi-platform and there's going to be music and there's going to be theatre and there's going to be art. 
Yeah, so the night's called uh, Electric Tunnels. It's all about the most exciting unsigned electronic acts in the UK. It's big, dancing, meaty, chunky, wonderful, lovely love beats. <laughs> I've never heard it explained like that. Really good, really good vibe. I love the dancing at the front. <laughs> Having a good time. I got emotionally involved and I did a lot of heckling and shouting. Really engaging and really interesting, really unique thing to put on in this kind of situation. Wow, what can you expect from this evening? Some really, really incredible music. Really fresh, raw musicians, up and coming stuff. Yeah, I love the idea that they're fusing hip hop and folk together. I love hip hop music and I love folk music, so it seemed like a really clever idea. Couldn't find a truth short enough for haikus, so now I write a lifetime of Laura's into my tunes. It's all for you, it's really all for you. So Eat Your Heart Out is a theatrical banquet for 130 diners. It's a banquet at the end of the world and the diners basically eat the story. And it kind of sits quite nicely as a meal and as a kind of playful, entertaining evening really. They're all really well judged and designed, very simple but really good. I really enjoyed it. It was very original and entertaining and delicious. The stew was lovely, the, the meat was, was lean. Weirdly tasty. Delicious. It's what happens when you're at a banquet at the end of the world, I guess. All the audience are equipped with silent disco headphones through which they hear the entire opera. The singers sing live and it's all fed to a central sound desk where it's mixed live and sent back to the audience headphones so they get a fully rounded opera experience and they won't miss a single note, beat, breath, anything. It was genuinely phenomenal. Um, I haven't cried in about 18 months and I had tears falling down my face. They were stunning performers. They were very, very good. It hit home and it did everything it was meant to do. And I was very, very impressed. Couldn't believe it was for free as well. <laughs> uh, it's a new play by Ben Ellis that was commissioned uh, in response to the UK student riots. And then at the end, we're really lucky. We've got Simon Hughes, Gareth Pierce, Dan Hind and Ben Ellis talking, which is great. I think it was very, very well done, uh, very well organised. Everything is done such a way that uh, it's surprising. Uh, you have the food, obviously, it's good. Making everyone feel like they were in, like, much more involved than you usually are with the play. I thought the use of the space was really great, the environment of it, and taking this very recent politically charged topic. I appreciated how it was addressed with all the different points of views. It was a very complete experience. You know, I don't think we could get 800 people here with free tickets, with visual guides, all these bands, this quality of music, unless Ideas Tap would really help us out, so big thank you. Um, it's an incredible opportunity, I feel really I feel really lucky. It's been fantastic to have the production support and all the marketing support. Yeah, it's been great. It's been really good, actually. You know, not only just money-wise, it's, it's kind of having the resources to be able to pull something off where I'm not sure I'd be able to normally. The venue's been amazing, actually. Um, fits just the right amount of people, and it's been really exciting. Uh, for those young people, I think it's uh, incredible, and uh, there should be more of it. As a showcase for young talent, I think this kind of night is what London needs more of, really. It should happen more often. I had a great time, yeah. I repeat myself. I had, a fun, I had, I had lots of fun. Hard-hitting truth. Yeah, I think it's really, really impressive. Yes. So what I wonder and what I'm afraid of is the people are sitting there going, I'm not creative or I'm not artistic. It doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about. I'm not either. Some of those guys aren't. And I work in the arts industries. And believe me, a lot of them aren't. It, creativity can happen anywhere. The two most creative people I know are a baker and an accountant. That's not what we're talking about. We're imagining our way forwards into the future and figuring out our tools. So that's what coming up was. I'm going to talk to you about the six people just to, just to show you what sort of ideas they had. Cherry, who's from Bath, actually. Um, put hip-hop and poetry together to create an amazing music night. It was a one-off. Jamie did two nights of wrestling, lycra-clad wrestling in the middle of London. It never happened before. He made history with that show. Now he works for a TV company that sort of promote wrestling. Daisy, in the middle there, grinning with the long hair. She now has her own company called Silent Opera. And with the backing of the Arts Council and Sky Arts, she's presenting a really big version of the Silent Opera in January in London. Spike put together politics, restaurant, exhibition, gallery, and a play all in one night. It was amazing, 
Um, I don't actually know what he's doing now, so that's a bit of a hole in the net. Um, but Preeti then next on made a film. She wanted to make a film. One of these actually says, I want to make a film. She did it. It was called After Dusk. It was amazing. And then she presented that as part of a 10-day curation of films within the festival. And at the end, Nina, who you might recognize as a clown from the video, her company, Kindle Theatre, are now one of Birmingham's best theatre companies. They imagined doing something fun. Imagine themselves in the future doing something they wanted to do. Essentially, to use an analogy, they thought, if I break this twig in this way, I can hoik a snail out of a shell. So building the imagination, building a playground for the imagination, is sometimes difficult. And I'd be lying if I said that if you signed up to Ideas Tap, you'd all get a suitcase full of money. But money isn't what we're talking about either. You don't have more imagination if someone pays you, and you don't have less if no one pays you. The only fuel it needs is the time you take to listen to it, to listen to the true things that it's saying. And once you've found the true thing that it's saying, there's nothing better that you can do than to say it out loud, to make it real, write it down, write it on a paper airplane and throw it down Wickham Hill. Um, there's an old Roman emperor called Marcus Aurelius. He said, the greatest way to control your future is to never deviate from what you believe to be true. The truth about me is I'm not really very good at anything at all. But I know a good idea when I see it. Coming up with a great idea, putting all this stuff together. It made me feel really alive. So next, I went to the Roundhouse in London and co-produced a thing called Curtain Call, which looked like this. Now, from the bottom of the piano to the top is eight meters tall and it's 18 meters across, a great silicon drum made up of little silicon rods that you sort of walk through. That's why it's called a curtain. After that, um, essentially, it was a, a space to imagine in. Projections, gigs, circus. We had all sorts in there. But the main point of this is we invited world-class artists. We just wrote to them. We didn't know them. We said, listen, we've made this cool thing. Do you want to be a part of it? And I was really afraid that we'd mess it up um, because this one was all on me. But they did it because we built a place for the imagination to have fun. And that, I think, is the whole secret. Now, these planes, I've only got two of them back, and I've had a look, and don't worry, I'm not going to read them out. But the tools, all of you have got a plane, you know, whatever. Um, but the tools to make this stuff happen, we're in the build part of TED. Perhaps the first tool is to figure out where it happens. You all know the places that make you feel happiest. And you all know the buildings and the landscapes that make you feel as strong as the world. And if it's not a building or a landscape, perhaps it's a taste or a sound, perhaps it's a person. You go there to figure out how to save your life if it was in danger. Your life is in danger! Go there. Go there this weekend. Talk to the person that runs it. Find out more about it. Tell them what you imagined that place could be. And ask them for something, a little time or a little space. And if it's appropriate, maybe a little money. Because that's all it is. And that's how we all got started, as far as I can tell. You just think, wouldn't it be cool to get that snail out of that shell? Thank you. <laughs>